From actual war zones, to riots, to humanitarian crises, for some journalists, this is the job. To routinely walk on a path of danger to get the story. Some reporters seek these assignments out, while others wake up one day to find out that their country is at war. Others still have never known their country to be at peace. Imid spoke with six very different journalists who took part in 2022's International Journalism Week and who have reported from conflict zones to tell us about what keeps them going, the lessons they've learned, and whether they carry the burden of what they've seen in their daily lives. All assignments which are in any conflict zone, let's say, affect you in some way. It has to do always with the people. Every conflict zone that I've been to is uh, life-altering. We weren't prepared for this. In an instance, we all turned into war correspondents in a war zone. I born in the war. I, I live and I grow up in the war. And uh, I hope I don't die in the war. We asked them to tell us about a story or an experience that stuck with them. Vanya Turner is a documentary filmmaker who's covered humanitarian crises throughout Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. I'd say one assignment that's stayed with me uh, was an assignment I did in 2019 in northern Mozambique. Um, I was covering Cyclone Kenneth. There was two back-to-back -back cyclones at the time. So we spent a week, give or take, in a small village that was completely um, destroyed um, by, the, by the cyclone. Um, just talking to people about what they lost and how they were coping. So around like two hours later, we got a call that the, there had been an attack and that the villages were burned, people had been killed, really brutal killings, trying to sort of um, get my mind wrapped around what had happened um, was, yeah, quite hard because we didn't know who was alive or dead anymore. We couldn't go back because the security situation was so bad. Matthew Castle is a multimedia correspondent for Vice News who specializes in the Middle East, but whose work has taken him all over the globe. For me, it was as a 21-year-old when I went to the West Bank during the Intifada. Um, I wasn't even a journalist then. I was more a kind of human rights observer. And yeah, just seeing everything that was happening there, when you're young and you go there and you're impressionable, like it's going to leave a lasting impact. It was hard, the stuff that I've, I've seen uh, since then as well, but I'm grateful for the opportunities because it has encouraged me to keep going and doing the job that we're doing. Alexia Kalaidzi arrived in Ukraine in March 2022 for her very first assignment as a war correspondent for Greece's national public broadcaster. I think the, the worst and the most difficult is to be able to remain calm and to be able to handle the sorrow of all these people that they have lost the beloved. That you're recording a woman who see her husband being unburied from a mass grave after 20 days. This woman is like me and you, and she lost almost everything in a few days, and now she has to cope with this. And you as a journalist, you have to be so sensitive in order to understand how you're gonna tell her story, but at the same time, not to start crying in front of her, of her or to start crying in front of the camera, because it's her drama, it's not your drama. Luisa Guliamaki is an award-winning Greek-Polish photojournalist with over 25 years of experience. She's covered revolutions, wars, and all kinds of crises in the Balkans and beyond for the AFP news agency. I went to Kosovo at least four times, but this was in January 1999, where it was presented that um, around 45 civilians were um, taken to a ditch and 
killed by a bullet. In Kosovo, I, I learned a lot and I, uh, the most important I think that I learned a lot about myself, how I can behave in such environment. And I saw that I can do it, which was very important. I was more anxious when I had to cover the refugees, for example, than the bodies uh, in the field. Why? Because with the first, uh, people are talking to you, are asking you questions, and they need help. In the other situation, uh, you need just to cover it. When I was in a mosque with 40-something buddies, you need to shoot it. You need to make photos. Nurwalik Palwak is an Afghan journalist who served as a general director for information, radio, and TV in Afghanistan's National Assembly. And he was also chief of staff at the Independent Election Commission. But in August 2021, when the Taliban returned to power, he was forced to flee, leaving his family behind. As a young generation, I had a lot of dreams for my country, for myself, but unfortunately, the, the, the Taliban take that chance from me, and now, I am an exile and as a refugee living in Europe. When I was going to office, so of course uh, it was a government car with me, so I was so afraid when I sat down in my car. So every second I was ready for that, that there will be a bomb blast because uh, that day uh, they put electronics bombs to, 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 to the cars. Uh, and, 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 and 20 meters I saw the car that it was blasted. Not one time, many times, during the, during the way that I'm going to, to, to parliament, to my office. So I saw many, many accidents like this. So it was become, become, become routine and daily life for us. The blast, the, the suicide attack, the war. So it was, we, we grew up with that. That's why you think it's so normal. I was warned many times by phone. I was, my car, they attacked on my car when I was going to out of the Kabul, not one time, many times the, I was under the attack. Uh, the day that the Taliban came, so they, they, they came to my home and they were searching for me. So uh, in Afghanistan, it's, it's a small country and especially my province, I belongs to Paktika province. At the, uh, we know each other and the Taliban know us because the Taliban are from my village. It, it's, so, it's so difficult to live in a such environment. So. These were the reasons that I left my country, with, with a lot of tears, with a lot of uh, dreams. Alexei Sorokin is the senior editor of Ukraine's Kyiv Independent. And along with every other journalist in Ukraine, he became an accidental war correspondent on February 24th, 2022. We at the Kiev Independent, we work 24-7. My phone is always on. Uh, I can't miss a message. I can't miss something major happening. So even when I had this one of the three, four days off that I had, uh, I still was following the news 24-7. Uh, but we adapt. For example, uh, a couple of weeks back, I knew that my first meeting and my first editing starts uh, on Saturday at 5 p.m. So for the first part of Saturday, uh, I went uh, at a cafe to just read a book and that felt refreshing. So now we don't have days off, we have hours off, which we try to maximize. It's a grueling job, whether you choose it or not. So we asked them to tell us what drives them, what keeps them going. It's really important to have journalists from all over the world to actually cover a conflict and tell the people what is happening. In Kharkiv, we need to be very thankful to all these journalists, to all these photographers who were there to, to eyewitness how kids were killed in a kindergarten without doing anything wrong. How we would know about this and the social media are not enough. We need to have people, professional people, who can do their job. I'm trying to, to, be, to be involved in, in, in the issues of my country, what's going on through the media and through the sources that I have in my country. Uh, I'm writing for my country 
and I'm defending my people. Many, many stuff, there are many stuff that I'm doing. Sometimes I'm going to universities, to schools, and to prisons, and, and, and tell to, to them my story. I wouldn't put myself like fully in the sane category. I'm a little crazy. I think like anyone who does this job, you have to be. Um, because, you know, most people, I would say normal people, cannot really understand or relate to why you'd want to leave your comfortable country and context and life and everything and go put yourself in danger and conflict zones. So I prefer to bear witness and hopefully share the things that I'm able to see with people who are not as fortunate or cannot go to those uh, countries or places and see what's happening. Over the last 20 years, a number of studies have shown that covering traumatic events, especially over a long period of time, can generate new trauma and can have negative effects on the journalists themselves. But until fairly recently, journalists suffering because of their job wasn't something the industry directed resources to or even talked about too much. Now, however, post-pandemic, more and more media organizations are paying attention and journalists themselves have been opening up about the importance of self-care. Is there something that, you know, grounds you? I think um, leaving for those assignments, I think, is always easier than coming back. I talk with colleagues a lot. I think sharing is very important. Um, and um, therapy as well helps. Mm, I do ceramics. Oh yes, I'm going to a workshop and just sitting there for maybe four hours, you know, making some pottery. You know, it's quite fast when you have family and you have child, it's quite fast that you have to adapt to the <laughs> being back. It's more difficult to discuss with friends because everybody will ask, what happened there? How was it there? And for this, I have to say, yeah, it, I, I need a time to discuss it or to, to respond on these questions because it's something that it's still too fresh inside to really be able to, to um, describe to somebody who has nothing to do with that. I like to be underwater or on the water, swimming, whatever, you know, like I, I feel like it's a way of you know, cleansing uh, physically, mentally, like uh, just getting in the water. Uh, well, the, the situation uh, are, are like this, that, that you, you, you do not do nothing for yourself. And whatever you are doing, you are doing for your family, you are doing for your country. The priority is my country and my people. I know a lot of colleagues who, after February 24th, uh, asked for professional help. As for myself, um, I think I'm still uh, on adrenaline. I still don't exactly know uh, the toll that um, this war had on me. And I think that for me and many Ukrainians, we will only grasp uh, the harshness of this war uh, after it's done. Uh, after years and years, we will probably need some kind of help.